Welcome to uh, Fall Wingman 2017. Um, I'm Super Dave Rings. I am the owner of Black Line Endeavors LLC. Uh, I own a pop culture media company, which is one of the divisions of uh, BLE called Big Show Entertainment Network. So I own my own pop culture media business. So I am joined today by some very special guests that I want to introduce you to. Um, Mr. Martin Davidson, who is the co-owner of Kapow Comics and Coffee in Colorado Springs. I'm also joined by uh, Mr. Brian Swanson, <laughs> the COO of Galaxy Fest, who is also part owner of CK Comics and Collectibles in Manitou Springs. His son James is with us today. And I'd like to introduce you to Linda Sink, who is the CEO of Galaxy Fest and also part owner of CK Comics and Collectibles in Manitou Springs. Uh, Galaxy Fest is the second bi biggest comic con in Colorado, and it will be uh, February 9th through the 11th, 2018. And it is a fun time. In fact, it's so much fun. Last year when it was over, I cried. That's how much fun I was having as a geek nerd. So um, I want to also introduce a very special guest, um, from the show, The Walking Dead. Mr. Thank you. So, what we're going to talk about today is the power of connectedness, how to start your own pop culture media company. I kind of changed this a little bit. We're going to just talk about entrepreneurship in general. So, um, that's us. These are our brands. Branding is important. Marketing is important. So, uh, you want to you want to have you want to do your branding through logos, marketing, marketing, marketing is very important. So those are some of our logos. That's me, Galaxy Fest, and Kapow Comics and Coffee. What is pop culture? It is modern popular culture tran transmitted via mass media and aimed particularly. I'm going to change that. I know it says younger people, but young at mind. So, does anybody have any ideas on that? What pop culture is? What do you think? It's a lot of things in, in Hollywood, a lot of things that are popular on social media, on right. Instagram, etc. Um, a lot of even some like clothing brands are, are entwined in, in pop culture as well. Right, absolutely. It's a viral YouTube video. Absolutely, I'm a YouTuber. That's how I got started. So, shot my first video at uh, Electronic Daisy Carnival in Las Vegas. So it was terrible, but I, <laughs> I got better as time went. But you're absolutely right. So pop culture is your movies, your television, your fashion. You know anything that's popular, it's pop culture. That's really what it is. So that's the business I'm in. You know. Um, Super Dave Brains and the Big Show is a movie review panel. Um, I've got Big Show Games and Tech Toys, and I got a new show I just started called Ben After Dark that covers electronic dance media, or music, excuse me. So I'm, I'm a big, I'm big into techno and house music. So, but you're absolutely right. Um, all right, we're gonna get into our story, and I'm gonna turn it over to Linda to get it started, and I'm gonna go look for some surveys but you know that's basically what I, I do um, you know we've got uh, Big Show Entertainment Network I've got my own fashion brand um, I've got a cupcake and wine bar and I've got a big business development so I've got multiple businesses and these guys have multiple businesses that we're working on so, um, I'm going to turn it over to Linda and I'm going to go steal some of the surveys <laughs> It's, it's something I'm developing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this to you. I'm just going to start clapping. Um, my name is Linda Sink. Uh, Brian Swanson is my business partner. Mike Mundy is a good friend of ours, and Martin in the back. We're in the same industry. So we all, we're all geeks at heart. We're all young-minded, young heart, um, and we love what we do. So in, in the grand scheme of things of entrepreneurship, that's kind of what we're going to talk to you about. Um, 
little bit of a, my background, I was in the military, Air Force, four years, served at Cannon Air Force Base and deployed a lot over Saudi and Turkey. Um, loved what I did, and somebody really, really smart that uh, I used to work with said, work smarter, not harder. I was about 110 pounds and lugged around a 150 pound toolbox on the flight line. It was a lot of fun, it was a lot of hard work. So when I got out, um, it took about three months or so, enjoyed my life, uh, did the GI Bill, and then got a job. And I hated every minute of it. <laughs> Went to school, I was gonna be uh, sports medicine, I wanted to wrap ankles, I was really into sand volleyball, so I thought, well, I'm gonna be a coach, I'll be a PE teacher, I'm gonna go to school, and then I'll get to do what I love there. Well, that didn't go very well either. So, ended up moving back to Denver, stayed with my brother for a while, um, fell in love with martial arts all over again, trained with um, U.S. Taekwondo headmaster uh, Sang Lee, got my black belt, opened my own school. So I really didn't wrap ankles, but I was teaching people how to kick, so I was still having a good time. So that was my first uh, step or side step into entrepreneurship. I saw what it took to build a martial arts school, so I thought, huh, I can do that. So I got my black belt. Um, a friend of mine called me a few months later and said, you want to start a school? Sure. So getting started. Uh, we talked in the last class about just jumping in and doing what you love and loving what you do. So martial arts was my passion. I used to beat up my brother when I was little. We'd watch Bruce Lee movies and Jackie Chan movies and all that stuff. So I was having a good time. We talked about not thinking about it, not overanalyzing, and just taking the first baby step into whatever business or thought process of entrepreneurship that you have, and just moving forward um, a little bit at a time. Well, I had a business partner at that time who was much wiser in his years. Um, so he knew how to do a business plan, and he knew the financial side, and he knew all of the other stuff. I knew how to kick people, and I knew how to teach kids how to do it. So. I was the trainer um, and the instructor, and he was the business guy. So our school was a huge success, um, and I say that only because of networking. Uh, but when you're networking to build your business, you go where your people are. Well, I was teaching little kids how to learn self-respect, self-discipline, integrity, motivation, hot eye, hand body control, those kinds of things. But where do little kids go? Um, where do they hang out? typically mommy and me daycares or the playground or those kinds of things. Well, I can't network with the kids to bring them into the school, so where do the kids go that the moms hang out, that I can hang out, because I don't have kids, uh, where do I go to hang out with the mommies to get the mommies interested in the school and bring the kids to go teach to learn how to kick and play and have a good time. So that's where I learned the power of networking through gaming. Moms like to play cards, they like to play board games, they like to play dice games. So I was networking where the moms like to network and play, and so that I gained their trust. We became friends. <clears throat> I invite them to the school to learn or to give them a couple weeks free. I fall in love with the kids, the kids fall in love with me, and then now we have a school that's thriving and building and growing. That was my first business back in 2001. From there, I was introduced to real estate through my husband. I started teaching and learning, um, fixing and flipping. You guys are familiar with that. Um, so I was fixing and flipping for several years, having a really good time. And in order to buy a house, you have to have money. But where do you find people that have money? I don't know. Uh, maybe a chamber, maybe a business networking function, maybe a, uh, an apartment association. You go where you go where the people are. You learn how to network with the people to grow the business, to find the funding for the real estate to build that business. Five years later, I have a real estate empire, and I'm, I'm flipping houses, probably three or four houses a month and doing really, really well. The bubble hits in 2008. Let's start all over again, okay? So I've got two businesses that I'm in and out of that were successful, what I'm gonna do next? I'm out having a cup of coffee and I meet this guy over here, um, coffee exchange downtown Colorado Springs. He's networking on one end of the table, I'm kind of playing and eavesdropping on the other end of the table, um, trying to figure out what they're up to, and we eventually get together. His network meets my network, and now we have a new network of people and another new business. Three businesses in, we're still together, we're still doing great things. So I say all of this to make a, a, a quick and easy point. You can't, you can't over plan 
and you can't predict what's going to happen. You kind of just look for the opportunities as they come and go. Are you the type of person that's going to take the opportunity and go with it? Are you going to analyze it to death? Or are you just going to sit back and let life happen to you? I'm the type of person that I have 10 ideas, and I'll probably pick three or four to run with. He kind of overanalyzes. He's the, he's the numbers guy, and he'll tell me what we can and can't do, and then we move forward. Um, we now have six businesses together, uh, and I'll let you, him tell you the CK Comics and the Galaxy Fest story. Um, so Dave Rames told you about Galaxy Fest. It's one of our businesses. CK Comics is our other business. We have a nonprofit, so we give back to the community. Um, and we have several other businesses as well. So my point being is getting started is quick and easy. Uh, you don't have to have a business plan to jump into things. You just have to have the idea. It sucks when you come up with an idea and then the next week or the next month you see somebody else capitalizing on your idea. Like, I had that idea. Why didn't I do it? I could be making millions or I could be doing that. So if you have an idea, hold on to it, capture it, talk to the people that are around you, and then take that baby step forward, whether it's holding the trademark, holding the name on the Colorado Secretary of State website. I think it's $10 just to hold the name. It's super, super easy. If you take the next step and you actually make an LLC or you incorporate, it's 50 bucks. You don't need an attorney to do that. You just hold the name. Or you buy the domain name so nobody else takes it from you. So really long story short, I'm just going to talk about the getting started the motivation of the networking, and I'm going to let this guy tell you the story about Galaxy Fest and CK Comics. These guys were talking about um, that idea that goes away, okay, because somebody else took it over. You might remember TiVo, okay? TiVo was a while back. TiVo was one of those first things that came out. It sat on your uh, thing. It was better than a VCR. You could actually go back and watch movies and do different things like that after you recorded them, okay? Prior to TiVo, we had VCRs, and I'm sitting there one day in my basement over at Woodman in Rangewood, because I was stationed at the Air Force Academy at the time, and I'm sitting there and I was like, you know what would really be cool is if I could turn around, connect up to my internet, download a movie, watch it, and it disappears and self-destructs after 24 hours. It didn't exist. Now, what would have happened if I had done that? What if I had followed through with that? Where could I have been? Yeah, but those are bygones, <laughs> you know. So what have, we, what have we done? We have, Lynn and I, she told you the story kind of leading up to where we're at now, but we have Galaxy Fest. Galaxy Fest is your pop culture convention. It's a full-fledged pop culture. We don't cover anything outside of anything, okay? Everything is there, anything from anime to zombies, okay? So if it's pop culture, and pop, what's really interesting, I just heard a thing the other day. If you take uh, President Trump, first of all, President Trump is not pop culture. President Trump is a political figure of our life and our, our country and everything else. However, once you put him on Twitter, now he becomes pop culture. So pop culture is not always comics. It's not always cartoons. It's not always anime. It's not always Walking Dead. It can be something completely different that the world has grabbed a hold of socially and said, we like this, or we hate it in some cases. Um, but pop culture is it's what defines a lot of us you know we went we actually did an event over at the space foundation the symposium anybody familiar with that one the Symposium space symposium okay we did an event over there we were the only ones that were pop culture if you will we had a life-size yoda there that people love taking pictures of well why did we why did we get a lot of attention because every one of those people who walked through the space symposium had some kind of a relationship with Star Wars or Star Trek. It's what they grew up on. It was something that inspired them, whether it was Star Wars or whether it was Star Trek or whatever. So pop culture is really fun. So getting back into entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, um, there's a lot of technicalities behind it. I'm sure Dave will cover some stuff um, about attorneys and all this other kind of stuff, but also entrepreneurship about having fun. I spent 24 years in the military, I got tired of it, okay? As soon as my opportunity came up, I dropped my paperwork. Now, I wish I would have waited two months, my only regret in life, because then I could have passed my GI Bill on to my kid. Um, but when I was in the military, I would get up in the morning, go to PT, do this, do that, done at four o'clock, but you know what happens, four o'clock rolls around and boss says, 
You need to stay another two hours. What happens to your energy level? No. Okay, well, your two hours is up, but guess what? The commander says we got to stay another two hours. Next thing you know, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Finally, I get to go home and start all over again at 6. Okay? It really drains you, but when you're an entrepreneur, you're doing what you love. You don't think about time. Time doesn't exist. Okay? I have to always ask, what day of the week is it? When are we going someplace? She's the one who keeps track of my, my of our hour schedule. And she's like, did you read the calendar? No, I didn't have time to read the calendar. So when you're having fun doing what you love, time doesn't matter. Okay? What does matter is, of course, your family and God and all those other things that go along with that. But when it comes to work, whether it's a job or whether you're your own boss, it's a big world of difference. You step out of this uniform, if you guys want to be entrepreneurs, you step out of this uniform, your world will change. Okay? But if you're going to change, make it change to something that you really, really love. Something that you really, really like. Money isn't everything. Benefits isn't everything. Because if you make enough money doing what you love, you can afford benefits. You can pay for those benefits. That's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. A lot of the things that you do that save you money, gas money can be written off, computers can be written off, all these other things can be done. But the important part of it is all rolls right back into what do you like? What do you love? So Galaxy Fest came around. Linda stumbled over it, um, what, three years ago now, I think it was, three, three and a half years ago. She stepped over and stepped over and actually literally tripped over R2-D2 um, at an event going on at the Ambler's Hotel. We made friends with the owners of that. That was part of our real core of what we do with everything, and that's networking. So she's seen an opportunity there to touch a market for the businesses we had at, the same, at that time, build a relationship with the guy who owned Galaxy Fest, and then turn that into our business, more business, okay? Well, things happen, coincidence happen, those kind of things, and one of the owners of Galaxy Fest actually passed away. When he passed away, Linda and I as business people took over and helped out his wife put everything together, make it happen that one year. We had 10 days to put it together, 400 volunteers, and so it was herding cats. Life stopped for 10 days until Galaxy Fest happened. After that, we talk, sat down and we talked with the owner, of the current owner, the wife of the gentleman that passed away. We talked with Diane and said, hey, we can take this to a different level that you've never seen. We're not talking 500 people. We're not talking 1,000 people. We're talking thousands, okay? We're talking 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 people that we can come through here that's going to make all of our lives better, okay? Not only that, David had started it to do good. David had started the convention to do good for literacy, for STEM, okay? So science, technology, engineering, math, and of course, with pop culture, we add in the arts, so STEAM. So that's what grew into Galaxy Fest. And then all of a sudden, one day, last year in September, we go into a little store in Manitou Springs, which we didn't even know existed. We had only been in there one time. And we said, well, let's go back and see if we can get these guys to come to Galaxy Fest as a vendor. Michael at that time says, yeah, I don't think so. His explanation was, I don't want to pack up the shop, take my employees and take me and put it over there and try and make money there and try and keep the store open because I can't do both at the same time. It's not, phys uh, it's, it's not feasible. There's no ROI or return on investment there. I mean, okay, fine. Well, in some little side comment on the way out the door, Linda says, well, if you ever want to sell the place, a couple weeks later, guess what? I want to sell. What? <laughs> okay. So we ventured down that road to see what the opportunity was. Is there much? Is there a return on investment? Is it worth our time? Does it fit within the businesses that we already have? One of them being, of course, Galaxy Fest. And I think a comic store fits Galaxy Fest. Um, so we said, yeah, fine. So we opened up, or went in, and we took over and now own Gal um, CK Comics and Collectibles down in Manitou. Nice little benefit to that is it's probably the only, as far as I can find, is the only comic store in the country that has a bar. Okay, so we actually have beer and wine in the back. It only holds about 25 people or so at that capacity, but it's still it's it's an opportunity and it's a, it's basically another business on top of a business that's in a business. It's crazy. So when you put all of this stuff together, she mentioned six different businesses. Well, that's how you get to those six businesses is by taking opportunities. What does it mean by opportunities? Opportunities, something that's gonna be profitable for you, 
something that's going to do good for others, okay, because that's always a big key, because if you're not doing well for others, you're not going to do well for yourself, okay, plain and simple. Um, and I totally forgot the third one. But <laughs> all of this stuff all wraps up in together. Entrepreneurship is something that you have to have the heart for. It's not something that if you're going to be a follower that you can do, okay? I wouldn't recommend it unless you train yourself to be a leader, unless you train yourself in order to do those things. So entrepreneurship is for that person out there who's got an idea. It's for that person out there that wants to move on, who wants to be successful, and they want to be their own boss all at the same time. There's a lot of stuff. It's a bumpy road, okay? It's a really bumpy road at some times, but when you are doing what you love, the bumps don't count. It's like ignoring the speed bumps in the parking lot at Sam's Club, okay? So, how many in here want to actually go into entrepreneurship? Is that why you're here? Awesome, okay? Quite a few of you. So, there, Dave's gonna give you some information. I think I'm just, or is Martin coming up next? Uh, I'm gonna give, give some information that I'm gonna bring Martin up. Okay, he's gonna give you some information. It's a little more on the serious side of the, of the business. But just keep in mind, these are little things. They're tools. There might be little stumbling blocks that can come along. One of the things that I believe in is giving reality, and David's going to give us a lot of reality on this next little segment here. Um, but I believe in reality because if you're going to be something and be successful at it, you have to know what your stumbling blocks are. You have to know what your detours are. I taught my kids the same thing, plain and simple. I don't, I, I don't care what it is. I mean, my kids were bowlers. I, I raised my daughter and my, he almost went to college. Um, I raised my daughter from being a bowling champion in, in certain areas to actually getting a scholarship with <coughs> bowling. Well, believe it or not, even that little piece of it, there's stumbling blocks. There's those days that the shoes just don't work right. There's those days that the brain just don't work right. So you've got to get over that to become what you want to become. Okay. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Dave. Dave has uh, done lots of things for us, kept us on kilter, uh, led, led us down different roads for networking. Yeah. It's going to get bigger. Bigger opportunities. <laughs> He's got some big ideas, um, and I think we all do. So yeah. Mr. Dave. All right, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to touch on something that Brian talked about in being an entrepreneur, because it really – you know, every one, every one of you guys has that leadership trait. And, um, you know, I spent um, <clears throat> two terms in the Air Force. So I was first at NORAD, and then I was here when this was Falcon. So that tells you how old I am. But, um, so you, you, you all have that. You, you've got the leadership trait. So uh, one of the things I didn't get to talk about in last class, but I'll mention it now, is resilience. Uh, we're talking about resilience. is the, the ability to withstand recover and grow in, in the face of stressors and changing demands. That's what entrepreneurship is all about. What do you say, Brian? Because you're going to have a lot of different stressors and a lot of things that you've got to go through. You know, it's not easy, but, you know, if you love it and if you're consistent and you stay true to what you believe in, it can be very, very um, gratifying. So um, I'm going to go over a couple things. Um, the business plan, I know you mentioned the business plan. And the reason I do that, I have 25 years as a communications project and program manager, and I have an MBA. So I'm, I'm a, I'm a uh, very, very down in the weeds kind of guy. So, but I didn't, I didn't do my business plan and then get started. I got started, and then I chased the business plan afterwards. Because if you have a good idea, you got to get started. Okay, that's important. Don't procrastinate. Just do it. Um, Mel Robbins, one of the, she's a motivational speaker, and what, she has the rule of five, the five-second rule. Like uh, she went through. I think she lives in Boston, but they started a business and it failed, and she couldn't get out of bed, and they were eight hundred thousand dollars in debt. And one day she she counted down five, four, three, two, one. She got up. Boom. She's one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the country. So don't worry about things. Like Brian said, just go do it. You got a good idea, get started, jump. Jump off that cliff. Um, motivation, motivation, there's plenty of motivational speakers out there. Um, 
I mentioned Mel Robbins, Tony Robbins. I love Tony Robbins. Uh, the guy went to prison. He's a multimillionaire now. So uh, you, you could make it. Uh, networking, networking is really important because that's how I met Linda, Brian, and now Mike from The Walking Dead and my good friend Mark, which I'll bring up here in a second. Um, you want to network. Resources to get started, you know, we've got a lot of, as a veteran, we have a lot of resources. So you've got the Small Business Administration, you've got SCORE, which is an arm of the Small Business Administration, Chamber of Commerce, which Brian's wife is a member of, or works at, works and I'm going to join it. It's about $400 a year, I think. Legal, you've got, a, you know, you've got a great idea. Brian mentioned it. I think he mentioned it, too. Buy that domain. You can do it through the Secretary of State, but I own a lot of domains, as, as Sergeant Colin would, uh, Colin would know, through GoDaddy.com. <coughs> I, I own a ton of domain names. So, um, you, trademarking, copywriting, lawyers. You know, you've got your lawyers, you've got your accountants. As you grow and you get really big, you're going to need those people. But you want to be careful on how you use that last one. Because lawyers cost money. So I only like to see my lawyer when I need something done. Now, you don't have to go through a lawyer, as Linda said. You can do a lot of things on your own. You can use, use LegalZoom.com to get, you know, to get all the, you know, you want to get your, your foundation built. You got your idea, run with it. But remember, you got you to gotta protect it. You know, if you got a really great idea, you want to protect it going forward. Um, I talked about accounting. I use the Schaefer Group up on North I-25. Uh, your accounting people are great. Taxes, you can write off everything. If you got an office in your home, that's a write-off. The miles that you clock, that's a write-off. You know, everything that you do for your business, you should be writing off. So, uh, your accountant can help you with that. Uh, you want to get out in the local community. You want to attend events. That's how I. That's how I met Brian and Linda. You know, you, I, and I met Martin that same way too. At the grand opening of Kapow Comics and Coffee. So you want to get out in your lo local community. You want to do outreach. You want to. You, you got to put yourself out there. You know, if you start a business, or like I've started a pop culture media company, I'm the face of that business. You got to be out there. You got to be up front. So. Um, and then uh, how to celebrities. So we've got Mike here, but I've interviewed a lot of celebrities in the, in the year, year and a half, almost two, that I started the business. It's amazing. From one little idea to meeting all these different celebrities all the time. So uh, International Movie Database has a membership, a premier membership that I have, which allows me, any celebrity, I can get their publicist, their agent, whatever, and I contact them. And that's how I've gotten a lot of interviews. So, um, my favorite interview is I interviewed um, the voice of Wonder Woman on Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. So, the name is escaping my, my brain right now. But, uh, and also, anybody ever watch the show Grimm? I interviewed the stars of Grimm. So, actually, they're married. I didn't know that they were getting married. But, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So, um, we're going to get into questions in a, in a few minutes, but first I want to bring uh, Mr. Martin Davis. Up. He's the co-owner of Kapow Comics and Coffee here in Colorado Springs. I kind of share with, uh, his story, and then we'll get into some questions. Thanks, Martin. Yep, thanks for being here, guys. <clears throat> so, 1975, I had a paper route. Okay, you know a newspaper? I know they don't have big newspapers anymore. <laughs> But anyway, it was a whole deal where I had to deliver the papers and I had to collect all the fees and I had to, I, you know, I was my first foray into, into being a business person, okay? Um, and the, the, the few dollars that I made delivering papers for two years, I would always go down to the 7-Eleven by the Safeway and I would buy comic books, okay? I loved reading Tarzan, <coughs> The Human Fly, um, Spider-Man, my favorite characters, The Beast, The Incredible Hulk, um, all that kind of stuff. And, and it got me hooked on it. Well, then I got older, I went into high school, I put away my boyhood fun, you know, 
you know, went to high school, went to college, came back from college in 1986, and found my comics. And I'm going, these things are cool. Okay? Loved them. You know, and I started reading them again, and I decided, hey, I'm going to do something with this. So I went and I went and I traveled all over the place. Some of the, my favorite days in my, my past life was traveling around the country looking for stocks of comic books. Okay, And I found some good stuff. Um, I love buying something for a quarter and then selling it for 400 bucks, 500 bucks. Okay, That makes me feel like awesome. You know, I know something you guys don't know how to do, okay? Um, and so I started doing conventions. I've done conventions all over the United States, mostly on the western half of the United States. Um, and people bought these comic books. And they asked me to find other comic books for them and other items for them as well. And um, I, I just started, and that's how I sort of started to supplement my income. I'm a retired high school teacher. Um, and my sister, also being interested in, in entrepreneurship, uh, after I was winding down my, my teaching career, decided, hey, let's go into business together. I said, okay. And uh, we came up with this concept of comics and coffee. So we opened up a brick and mortar sh uh, shop about comics and coffee. Uh, we, we're, we're, both her and I are really, you know, they, they talk about just jumping in. That is not me. That is not my sister. We research the heck out of it. Um, we, we, we decided, well, we wanted to be near a college. We wanted to be a destination. Our whole concept was we wanted to be a destination for people to come. Okay, We wanted students to come and study. We wanted uh, people just driving by to see our marquee, to see our sign, and stop in and buy some coffee. Uh, we wanted to be in a, in a part of town where there was already some uh, upper end, uh, high class businesses and things like that. So. We picked the University Shops, which is a brand new, a relatively new shopping center in the north part of the town. Uh, so we, we, we did our, our work, okay? Uh, we hired a, a construction company, uh, signed a contract, and then the, the, the shit started to hit the fan, okay? Um, I think we ended up doubling what we signed the contract for just to get that place open, okay? Uh, we, we spent probably about a quarter of a million dollars getting my shop open. It should have been about half that figure, okay? Um, but, but you know, do you, do you fire the construction guy in the middle when he keeps coming to you with bills? Or you suck it up and keep going, try to find somebody else to do it? I mean, you're kind of in between a rock and a hard place. So we just sucked it up, got it done, got them the heck out of there, opened up a little over a year ago. Um, and, it, and it's been a, a great experience. Um, it, it, you know, we're, the comic books are killing it. You know, um, we come in there, we have hold files, we have uh, back issues, uh, we do conventions. Uh, that, that, that's one of my favorite things to do is conventions. So we do a lot of conventions. We're planning to travel to Kansas City to do PlanetCon. We're going to travel to Al Albuquerque. We're going to travel to do that kind of stuff. Get our get our uh, our name out there, sell our product, that type of thing. Um, one thing that we thought was going to take off was the coffee, and that hasn't really been the case. Um, Starbucks is a couple blocks away. Dutch Brothers put in a new place right on uh, Garden of the Gods. So it's been a fight. We put in a $30,000 drive through and we don't have a whole lot of people using it, even a, a year later. Okay? A lot of people come in and want to sit down, which is the whole idea behind our shop. They want to come in, they want to sit down, they want to buy a comic, they want to drink some coffee, they want to have a conversation, they want to have meetings. Um, and so that aspect of it's been really good. But uh, um, even with all the planning and even with all of the thought process that went into it, things really didn't go the way we thought that they were going to go. Um, and uh, um, it, it's trending upward, which is a good thing, all right? But, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a three to five year process. We, we had a five year business plan going in. Uh, we didn't think we were going to be making money until after the third year with our business. Uh, that's what we kind of had planned for. Um, and it looks like that's hopefully going to happen because we are trending that way. But uh, it's been a great experience. I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, 
despite what people think, think it's okay working with your sister. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, don't go into business with your family," but it's been it's been a, a, a great experience. Um, and, and so, you know, yes, if you've got a, a plan, you've got an idea, you know, I, you know, they, they talk about just jumping in, you know, that type of thing. Um, you know, but the but the whole point in going into business, right, is what I told you earlier, right? Buy low, sell high. Right, or sell as high as you can. Because in the collectible field, the collectible field is about what you can get for it. You know, there are guidebooks and things like that. And and I will sit there and I will tell you to the day I die that something is only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. And that's what the collectible market is all about. That's what the pop culture market is all about. You know, what is somebody willing to pay you for what you have, what services you sell. So that's my story. Thank you. Yeah, that, you know, that's very true, you know, um, my business is, is totally internet based. I, I don't, you know, I've got some businesses that I'm going to do a brick and mortar, but that's down the line. As I, as I grow one business and make money, I move it to the next. So, you want to stay focused on a certain idea, because once you get rolling as an entrepreneur, and that, that idea factory, like Linda said, it's not unusual for us to pop ten ideas out in the out in the day, and you know, then I got to tell myself, hey, super, stay focused. You can't, don't, you know, it's like a dog chasing a car. You know, you can't you can't chase every car. You got to pick uh, something that you're really passionate about, and you got to do your research. So, you know, when I, when I say jump in, or we say jump in, I'm not saying jump in and not do your research. I'm saying don't procrastinate because you don't have everything in place. Okay, get started. And you know, part of you know being an entrepreneur is the journey. Okay, that's the love of it. It's it's like you know I'm originally from Indianapolis. I've been to four Indianapolis 500s. And being an entrepreneur to me is like being a race car driver. The the thrill of it is unbelievable. And plus, you get to meet great people. I meet great people all the time from all over. You know, uh, I think this past Denver Comic Con, I met Sean P. Diddy Combs, uh, Sean P. Diddy Combs, Puff Daddy's people from his React TV. I think it's React TV. He owns, a, you know, he's in a bunch of businesses. The guy's worth seven hundred and fifty million or something like that. But I, I actually got to meet his people. So that's the networking piece. But um, you have an idea, you want to protect that idea. More importantly, like Linda said, and I think Brian said it, and Mike would agree, and, and, and so would Martin, you gotta act on it. You gotta act, you know. So um, definitely, definitely get started. Okay, I'm gonna um, uh, make sure you fill out your, your surveys, and if you have not entered the drawing, make sure you do that, um, because uh, give away some Star Wars tickets and you guys are going to be hanging out with me on opening night for Star Wars The Last Jedi. So I'm going to open it up for questions and I'm going to show you how you can contact us and, and um, you know because we're here, we're here for you guys if you have questions you know we want to we want to share our experience with you you know so that you don't yeah you know you know the biggest thing about being an entrepreneur and being a business person and business minded and learning um, about all the things I've learned in my, in my business is the thing that I uh, you know really get satisfied about is being able to share with other people you know one because I love it and I'm passionate about it but if you're you're doing something that's not similar or you're going into business you know I don't want you to make the same mistakes I made so I, I, I want to pass on what I've learned to somebody else help somebody else and that's, that's part of the motivation, my motivation for what I do is to kind of, you know, help my friends, you know, help them grow their business, uh, help them get exposure. So that's why we're here. We're here to, to help you guys and, and answer questions because there's a lot of information out there, you know, and uh, if you've got a question, there's an answer um, waiting. So anybody got any questions? Yes, sir. So uh, how do you get started? 
financially. You know, I mean, you got an idea, got a desire, a plan, <coughs> but you know, it's like I'm gonna open a coffee shop or whatever else. I mean, that costs money, capital. Either you gotta buy a lease or rent it or something like that. Um, and of course, for all the materials, setting up the initial costs. I mean, how do you go about against getting initial costs assuming that we don't just have that laying around? With the right. Well, most most entrepreneurs, most of the guys that have been really really successful guys and and, and ladies, um, they didn't start off being wealthy. But you find out, you find ways to, you know, uh, fund your dream. So there's resources like the Small Business Administration. And being a veteran, you can get loans. But you want to be careful about, you know, it's just like an investment portfolio. You want to be careful how much you're exposing yourself. So a uh, long time ago, uh, I guess I was in my early 20s, um, I wanted to, I wanted to build a restaurant on the north side of Colorado Springs near the New Life Church. I had an idea. I wrote it all down. I did the plan. But I didn't have the money. Well, a wealthy investor came along and he was like, Yeah, I like your business. I'd like to invest. I need somewhere to park my Ferrari. And I'm like, Okay, I'm your guy, 24 years old, right? So, you know, I worked on it, worked on it, and then I, you know, I had lawyers and everything. You know, then I learned that, you know, if you're not careful when you start a business, you want to, you'll end up not owning the business if you expose yourself to venture capitalists or people investing. So, with the, that business didn't work. So, with the next business that came along, I decided to do it a whole different way. There's all types of businesses you can start. So you don't have to start a standalone business like we, you know, we all have standalone businesses. I think you, you guys are LLCs and I'm an LLC. If you have a certain business that you're passionate about, you can, you can get a franchise on another business, you know what I mean? Let's say that, okay, what's, what's your favorite restaurant in town? Anybody? Just pick one. Over easy. What's that? Over easy. Over easy. I bet you that all of the over are franchised. So you can get in a franchise program, build the money up to do what you really want to do. So it's kind of like playing poker. There's certain businesses, wouldn't you agree, that you want to keep, that, you know, but there's certain businesses that I, you may develop that ah, I'll sell that, take that money, and put it in the business I really want to do. Because I've got certain businesses that I, I don't mind selling. You know, there's certain the ones that I want to keep, I'll keep. But if, you know, that's that's one way to get funding. But you can get a small business loan and, and get started, and especially being a veteran. So I would say contact the Small Business Administration, Chamber of Com Commerce. There are score counselors that are work with you. There are ways to fund the business. Martin, were you self-funded? <clears throat> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the other way. There's there's self funding and then there's also creative funding. Thirty years of self buying and selling they saved a lot of money. Yeah. So you can find you can find partners, whether they're family or not family, you can find partners to do that with you. There's silent partners that you can bring in to protect your intellectual property and then there's um creative financing. So if you're looking to acquire, like Brian and I did, we acquired CK Comics. We used creative financing to take over uh, the existing lease take over um, the, the company through not an outright purchase, but maybe a, pay, a payment plan. So um, there's different ways that you can do it, and we're you know it, it would require another hour to go into all of that, but yeah. you can you can get with us later. Yeah, yeah there's numerous ways. Numerous ways. Maybe. Some good, some not so good. Yeah. Some that you. Guido. There's a, there's a lot of, no, don't use Guido. There's a lot of money in town. There's always Guido. No. <laughs> there's a lot of money in town. You just have to know where to look. There, we, there we've is. been networking this town long enough. We can, we can help you find it. If Unless you know you do want to get a business loan. Right. Yeah, there is. I just, like I said, you, with investors, venture capital, you got to be careful with that. Because you'll end up not owning your business. And that's what was about to happen when I started the first business. And that's when I went back to school because I was like, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So, I, you know, the guy that was going to invest, he's like, well, what do you know about business? I'm like, you're right. I'm going back to school. And that's when I got my MBA. So, but, and there's always short time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. So along the same lines with, with financing and whatnot, so when you guys first 
got into opening your first business, right? Um, assuming like, it's, I guess it's a two-part question. One, was it, were you essentially pursuing it full time? And then two, if you're talking about you're not gonna be turning profits for three to five years potentially, how are you essentially maintaining a life when, if you're you know, full time, I'm trying to start a business? Yeah, that's so. a good question. First rule of entrepreneurship is have a job. That's rule number one. Because a lot of times you're coming out of your own pocket. You know, I, haven't, I don't think any of us have come out as much as Martin maybe. <laughs> but, yeah, no. but uh, you know, we've all sunk our own money into it. So you're going to have to, in the early days, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to, like, I, you know, I still work here. I'm a GS, and I have my business. And you're going to work almost around the clock. You know, I think this last couple of months I had a little bit of break, but that's about the end. I would have nights where I would, I think I would work all day. I would go to bed at like 10. I'd get up at 3.30 in the morning, and I'd start working on my business. And then I'd go, go to work, and then get off work, and I'd work on it some more, and then go to bed at 10. And like Brian said, you lose all track of time. My your calendar is going to be set up by what you're doing. Like it was set up on events. Okay, what day is it today? Oh, I got to be at this event at this time. I mean, I there's days, times uh, I didn't know what time it was or what day it was because it's you, you just get up and you start all over again. It's, it's a, but yeah, you've got to you, you you've got to have a job to grow a business. Another another so. part to that, and I think Linda would agree with this, is a support system. Um, her and I are not married to each other, but we are married to different people, and they both have jobs. Okay, so that plus I have a retirement check coming in, 24 years military, um, so I, that helps out a little bit too. But it also depends on how you manage your money. So it depends on where it's coming in, and if your spouse is there or girlfriend, whatever, to support you to help you, that makes a big difference. They're letting you live out your dream because they know that somewhere down the road. They're not going to have to work, and you're not going to have to work because you've built a business that works for you. Okay, yeah, so there's different perspectives. There's, there's, there's a lot of sacrifice too. They're talking about working around the clock. You really, you really do lose track of time. Um, it's exhausting, but I wouldn't say it's it's painful. If that makes sense. I no, mean, you're you're yeah. working. Your, you guys have the, the luxury and the benefit of being in the military and doing what you do, serving your country, that kind of thing. But you can also take advantage of your off-duty time. So if you're going to go home and slack and watch TV and drink a beer, that's your prerogative. You can do whatever you want to do. But if you're going to go home, why not do something for your future? That way, when you get out or you retire, you have something set up. So that way, yeah, you might collect a retirement check. Some of us don't. Maybe you set up a business or three, and, and you've got something to look forward to. But you can sacrifice yourself now because you're already sacrificing for your country. Might as well do a little bit more and build yourself up for your future. So, yeah, it's 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 tight. It's extremely tiring. My husband works full time. He loves me and he supports me and he lets me do whatever I need to do. He pays the bills. And I have to do some things too. But um, he he's the one that takes care of life, while I take care of the future. I have that luxury and I have that benefit. He's got the same thing. He's got a he's got two retirement checks and a wife that works. So he really can just do whatever he wants to do. I have the luxury. <laughs> I have two wives, mind you. I have the, the one I'm married to and the one that yeah. <laughs> I don't do whatever I want to. He does whatever I tell him to. You know, so. and, and to add to that, I I had a dream for 30 years. <clears throat> I've had this dream for 30 years. It took me 30 years to get where I wanted to be, and I. You know, I looked at comic books like money. They were investments. I mean, I've sold comic books for 16, 17, 18,000 bucks. Okay? So that's an investment. And the th beautiful thing about that, it's like the stock market. You buy a nice book, it's high grade, movie comes out, you know, your profit starts to skyrocket because, because the investments, you know, everybody wants it now. When everybody wants it, they're willing to pay more money for it. So, um, you know, I, I, I put a lot of money away. I, had, I invested in the comics. Every time I buy a collection, I bought it. I'd save a little bit of money to buy more collections. I'd put a lot in the bank. 
Um, you know, my sister obviously had money to, to put into the, to the uh, business as well, too. But I, I had a dream for 30 years before I became. Mm -hmm. Okay, a support uh, system. Yeah. Yeah, and that's important. I'm, and the other thing I want to touch on is you've got to work hard, you've got to work long hours, but in the end, you're working for yourself. Do not, um, we went to the TED Talk, was it the 22 subs commander, was it Colonel, is it Sylvia? Sorvillo. Sorvillo, thank you. He gave an excellent talk. Uh, it was very emotional. So I'm going to tell you, do not neglect your family. Your family is your rock, okay? On the other end, you've got a, your, your spouse or your significant other, you, you need to make sure that they're buying into what you're doing. You know, it's no different as you're wearing that uniform. Because you're, you're enlisted or you're, you're an officer. Uh, my son is a, a first lieutenant down at Peterson. Um, your significant other or spouse is in too. Same thing with the business. If you start a business, your wife, your husband, they're in that business too, so you got to make sure that they're going to support you. You know, because if you look at something like what what Martin did, he had that contractor that came in and did stuff. You, are you married? Yeah. Okay. Him being married, and I'm only going to willing to be guess at this, but willing to be married, uh, or well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's willingly married. Um, he's got the business going on. on. The wife is supporting, and the whole nine yards. And maybe it's Saturday afternoon, the contractor's working, he thinks everything's cool, he's driving down the street, he's on his way up to Estes Park, next thing you know, the phone rings, and the contractor says something blew up, something went wrong. Well, do you spend the rest of the day with your family going to Estes Park, or do you turn the car around and come back and do your business? Hmm, tough decision. So those are the things, those are the sacrifices we have to make. So that's why your spouse or partner or whatever has to be in. Has to be they in. really yeah, have to be in. I think, Linda, you touched on that, too. You, you've you got to have good business partners. You've got to have a strong family, you know, to, so that you can do what you need to do. I mean, you know, um, there's nothing more gratifying and satisfying than chasing your dream. But it's, it's not going to be easy. And it's going to be hard work. You got it. If you you have to believe, that's what I told the last class. You have to believe in yourself. And, and Mom you, and Dad believe in you. You got to believe in you. Yeah. And you need. And if you do have a family, it helps when you take them to Hawaii hmm. on money that you made from selling comic books. Mm -hmm. yeah. You put up a brand new fence around the backyard <laughs> that you made from selling comic books. He like, or you he buy, like real life or you buy your daughter a car from selling comic books. Yeah. They love that stuff. Yeah. Because they <laughs> sacrifice too to get that car. So the answer, they answer your question is, yeah. is either have a job, stay enlisted, have some other money, but don't give up everything that you have. There are people that have done it. Robert Kiyosaki has lived in his car. Many people have, have been oh, yeah. broke and living on the street to make their dreams work, but you have the luxury and the benefit right now of having an income and working on your business. So that's what I would do if I were you guys right now. Definitely. Phil Knight sold shoes out of the car. So we can do one more. only folks have cards. Yeah, what's that? With cards? Our email. Yeah. Here. Oh, I have a I have a card. I'm gonna get a new one, but I'll give you. You'll be able to contact me. I'm all over. All you gotta just Google me. So it's uh, usually just here, but yeah. But uh, we have uh, all Thanks our contacts. Yeah, contact. I do have some cards with me. I can give you cards. Um, but uh, yeah, what do you what do you want to do, uh, LT? What? Well, I'm just just asking. Okay, good question. There's, there are ways to, um, to talk about w what your ideas are without giving away your ideas. We talked about this last class. Um, if you have a Facebook page, you could put out to the world, like, does anybody have an idea for how this could work? Or have you ever thought about or have you ever used this product? Have you ever eaten here? Have you ever tried this? Just kind of pique some interest. You could do that. You could also have a non-disclosure agreement already written up and just talk to some people and say, hey, I have this idea. Would you be willing to sign this NDA um, if I talk to you about that? And we're all willing to do that for you guys if you wanted to brainstorm what, what your thoughts are. And then there's a lot of resources here in town. There's um, angel investors. There's VCs. Oh, yeah. There's um, clubs. There's startup clubs. There's all kinds of resources for you guys here. You live. I know you live in a little bubble, but if you, if you 
need help, just reach out. We can point you in the right direction and help you get started. Yeah, Small Business Administration is great. Secretary of State, too. Scores great, Chamber. Be careful with the VCs, the venture capitalists. Be very careful. It's like, it's like shark ones, time. There's like some shark yeah. But, you know, you got to be careful that you, at the end of the day, you own that business, not the venture capitalists. So be careful. And that's where an attorney can help you. So my business was to, like, sign sponsors like Crown Royal. And I get so much money, and that's how I make money. So there's no, there's, there's very, there's really no investors. You know, there's advertising and, and merchandising and, um, you know, sponsorships. That's that's part of what I do. I have many, many revenue streams I've, I've, I've gone through, so, or developed. Uh, the other thing is Google is your friend. When I came up with the idea for a cupcake and wine bar, I Googled it. And you know what? People say, well, what? Cupcakes and wine? And I can pull out a menu of cupcakes and what wine goes with each cupcake. So, any other questions? Is your friend. <laughs> How do you go about you know, pursuing a sponsorship? So, I mean, what do you initially do if I was going to do it tonight? I mean, you just sit there and try to go to Crown Roll's website, and email, and be like, My answer would be networking. Okay. Yeah, networking because, especially in this town, uh, the, the bigger boys are a different story, but even if with the big boys, if you know somebody, your odds are better. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. We've all heard that. But especially when it comes to money and sponsors and ship, sponsorships and stuff, if you have to have somebody that knows what you're doing who believes in you in order to accomplish what you need to do. Because if you just send an email, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but if you just send an email over to Crown Royal, Where's it go? Yeah, that's true. You have to, <laughs> I will pick up the phone. It. I'll figure out who I need to get to. I'll pick up the phone. I'll email them. I'll call them. I'll try to contact them. But I'll, if I know somebody, I'll work through them. But I have form letters that, you know, I, you know I've sent to Coca-Cola. Their uh, people are over in Utah. The, you know, they own the distributorship for Colorado. It's actually in Utah. So, but you've got you, you to gotta try to find someone that you know or find a point of contact and call them. A lot of times I'll, I'll call somebody like AMC uh, movie theaters. AMC is the largest movie theater operators in the country. So I'd call in and then one person would say, oh, you need to talk to this person. And that, that's how I go about it. So I try to get somebody and talk to them before I send a letter. I try to establish a relationship, get an in, and then I make my move. Make sure you know what you're saying. Yeah, and absolutely. Make sure you've got uh, literature to go with. Yeah. So you need a sponsor package. You need a pitch before yeah, you Yeah, exactly. Call. So I've done all that. I've got a sponsorship package. I've got marketing plans. I've got ops plans. Every kind of plan you can think of. And a, little, and a little caveat to that, though, is oh, okay. is that I've had people offer to give me money, hmm? and I always say no because when people start to give you money, then you got to listen to their opinion, and then you got to <laughs> yeah. pay them back, and all that stuff. So there's there's you know there's that to think about as well too. Because I want to call the shots, and that you yeah, know, and that's why I say be careful with venture capitalists. There's always give and take. You know, always you'll you'll end up. You know, you always want to keep 51 percent of your business, or you send a pretty face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to reiterate something that Linda said earlier yeah. in the other class. Um, she said basically, if y'all have any questions, come by and have a coffee with him. Come by and have a beer with they, these guys and meditate. Uh, come to this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got some cards. Make sure it's time. Uh, make sure I get your surveys.